Hello and welcome to another Comedian's Interview for my blog, A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching over 800 stand-up comedians and counting over the last 46 years. My guest today is the wonderful Esther Manito. Hello, yes! <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm not too bad. How Lovely are you? to see you and thank you so and much you. for doing this. Um, You're more than welcome. The interview is going to last about 45 minutes to an hour and I'd like to go way back to the start of your comic career and ask you how did you become a comedian please? How did I become a comedian? Um, I fell into comedy uh, much against my will really. I, uh, I was doing one of the comedy writing courses that um, you, you can do at Camden Comedy School right. and a friend of mine she was like will you come and do it with me I was like yeah I'll do it with you because it'll get me out of the house and I was on maternity leave so I was like that that's something that will use my brain uh, but then I found out that you had to do a showcase to, at the end of it so wow. I was like well <laughs> I'm not gonna do that um, <laughs> so in, in my mind I'd already planned that I was gonna call in sick that day and not do the showcase which was at Backyard Bar right. um, and then um first time we had to stand in front of the class and and talk we literally just had to stand in front of the class and do like a minute story wow and the adrenaline of doing that i literally left and terrifying. i got on the tube and i threw up everywhere because oh, no. i was absolutely terrified i was like this yeah oh no i was like there's no way no way and then i did the showcase and that was it i was bitten wow and I had to keep it. I kept it a secret, like my dirty, dirty little affair. I used to scuttle out. I didn't tell anyone. Wow. It took me about three weeks before I told my husband. He came to the showcase, but he didn't know which what this course was I was doing. He's right. like, what are you doing? I kept it a secret from my family. Because, of course, everyone was kind of like, what the hell are you doing? You've got kids. Why? You can't go to open mics four nights a week. Like, and legitimately so. And my yeah. husband was just like, we've still got babies that are getting up in the night. What are you doing? And I was just like, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to still do it. You're gonna still and do it. Um, yeah, pushed. And, and I'm so glad that it's got to a point that it's now earning me money because I can be like, see? Yeah. But if it didn't, I would, I, he would ever be, he'd forever be right, which would not do. Which is... So, so when, you, <laughs> when you first started off, um, was... Uh, did you go to um did you do lots of five minute comedy clubs did you do five minute yeah. sets and things like that and take friends along yeah. with you yeah yeah i did all the bringer all the bringers where you perform to four comedians <laughs> yeah and <laughs> um and it's de and it's depressing and it's weird and it's cringy and it's terrifying yeah i did all of them and where you've got to stay till the end so you start the night at seven and it finishes at 2 a.m yeah and yeah I slept well, back yeah. From some random pub somewhere <laughs> um but it was also very exciting and it yeah. was you know how i met a lot of my now comedy friends so i can't really begrudge it but <sighs> i know back. i know a lot of um comedians who are up and coming and i go along to a lot of their big be their beginnings of their gigs and I sit and laugh and sometimes I see I listen to the same routine and I have to laugh I'm told to laugh in the right place oh you're so good <laughs> you're so good I before I started doing comedy I went up to Edinburgh Festival yeah. with a friend and I had no interest in comedy uh, nothing I was nothing to do with it and I didn't realize the impact of being like a positive audio and i've just got a resting bitch face which i feel has got better <laughs> I, it has I got better it. i think it's it's part of your comedy <laughs> picture it's brilliant but i'm not I, I i'm much better now at laughing and yeah. showing enjoyment but yeah. i i was just one of those people that even if i was enjoying something you just couldn't see it on my face i was a nightmare and i remember being sat in a stand-up gig and this guy just completely turned on me he wow. was like do you want to fucking tell you he really went off me wow. weirdly i think he follows me now on instagram i think he doesn't realize that i'm the person that he berated in front of an entire audience because everyone was laughing oh, no. but i'm i'm not an easy yeah. laugher yeah so uh yeah i think everyone's always happy to see you oh. in the audience because you're a very generous laugher well, which is very, very welcome very very kind and 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 when you said you were on a comedy writing course i went on one from a blog and it was through right. amused moose and um 
uh, I went along it was a half day thing and they forgot who I was and I was surrounded by a lot of people who wanted to be a reviewer and they came to me and they said yes we forgot about you and I said well I'm not a reviewer I'm not a critique I'm not a diarist I'm not a reporter I'm a member of the audience and I'm out to have a good time and so I always regard my blog as an enthuse for all the brave heroes in my mind who go out there and do it you know and, and it's and, a funny um, old it's a funny old thing isn't it i think once you become a reviewer of something you lose your love of it maybe yeah, a little yeah, bit because yeah. i can't imagine anything i don't know maybe i'm wrong I, but i think I you know once you become quite hardened to something yeah 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 very much so because hopefully my blog i'm very passionate about what i write about and i hope it i hope it comes through as well as being live in the in the audience um tell me about your first ever gig then your, your was it a five minute um yeah it thing? was yeah. it was my first ever gig was a showcase right that we did at the end of this course and then i did a funny women gig right so what sort of year are we talking about here then 2016 it would right. be right so so fairly recent fairly recent for th three or four years uh, no <laughs> What are we now? So it'll be five, five years, years coming up. To... Yeah. Do we count 2020 though? Can well, we just yeah. raise <laughs> there that? Is, there is that. I'm going to go back a year. I'm going to sound 36. <laughs> four and years. Four years. Yeah. All right. Four years. Yeah. Um, four years. I'm still a baby. What do you like to talk about on stage then? Well, I think you talk about the things that are kind of the most prevalent to yeah. you and for me I love an old rant and I think that's because I've come from a very ranty background so I just like to have a good old rant um I mean I don't mind making myself the butt of the jokes so or sometimes it might be a bit of a rant about me but it tends to be a bit of a rant about family right um I, I started off very much just talking about my kids and then I spoke I used to talk a lot about just my dad and then it was more my husband I mean my husband didn't even I remember when I first started doing stand-up people were like you never talk about your husband and I was like oh no it's because I'm just really happily married and, uh, and then <laughs> after my neck I just literally went in on him and I found pure <laughs> joy on just I um, he loves it <laughs> <laughs> he i mean people say to him do you mind but he's come to gigs where he's not had a mention and he kind of gets a bit dejected like oh i wasn't <laughs> to say, say i'm a bit annoyed about that that's a bit that's a, but, bit, um, like, that's a bit like les dawson and the mother-in-law and, and when the mother when he didn't yeah. mention the mother-in-law she asked why <laughs> yeah i think i think they do like because it's done through love as well yeah yeah like course, you mock yeah. The, the way my family were was the more you mock someone it was actually because you enjoyed them a lot of so course, yeah. we would always mock the people that were kind of like the big characters because they were the people that we really enjoyed being around it was always it, it for me it's a real sign of actually really feeling quite you know fondly of yeah, you yeah 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 very um, very much so it's just, it's the same my my home city's carlisle and it was the same with my mum and dad and my brother and everything um so you're going along on your comedy journey at the at the at the clubs um did you ever find it difficult at all to break through into comedy um well i mean it's all kind of like swings and roundabouts isn't yeah, it yeah. some i mean it's 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 so hard, it's so easy to forget where you've come from and I have been very guilty of just looking forward and going, oh, why haven't I got that? Why haven't I got that? I should be doing that. And then, you know, there's somebody going, are you seriously fucking complaining <laughs> when you're getting all the, you know, these club, you know, bookings and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it's so easy to just constantly look forward. And actually lockdown has been really good in kind of kicking my ass into um, being quite kind of rational and calming down with that whole thing and kind of taking kind of so did i find it hard i mean yeah you've got to work your way up and that's of all course, of yeah. graft um yeah you've got to, got to adjust yourself quite a lot you know you've got to take the kind of dying on your ass and the rest of it um but i think gigging regularly just makes you stronger and stronger and i i really kind of you you do kind of notice it's a little bit like where things just kind of click into place a little bit but 
you know, you'll keep evolving and things will keep changing. I don't know. Like sometimes you think you nailed it. You're like, oh my God, I can't die. And then you just go and have yeah, the most yeah. humbling death of your life. <laughs> so. I, th I, think, I think the more experience you get a bit though, whether good or bad, the better a comedian you become. Yeah, I mean, like anything, yeah. it takes practice and it yeah. takes resilience. And yeah, I mean, pff, I don't know. You, you see people that really know how to manage a stage and that comes from experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've been in many a comic competition. Uh, explain <laughs> more about this. Do you like them? Did, did, did you feel no. as though you had? No, <laughs> I don't know why. It's my, it's <laughs> my competition of it. Did you feel as though you it's, had to enter them to... Yeah, I yeah. guess. I guess it's it's kind of credits. And when you're doing the open mics, what else do you have? Yeah, you don't yeah. have anything else. Like once you kind of become a little bit more... Um, once it becomes your career, then there are things that go on your CV. But, you know, when you're kind of starting out, it's only winner of, semi-finalist of, whatever that you enter. But no, I hate competitions. They are awful. They are soul destroying and it's kind of like gladiators. You just, you know, you're just sat there wanting the person before you to be called out, to be ripped to shreds by the lions and you don't want it to be you. And it's horrible. I mean, you're sitting there just baying for the person <laughs> that's gone on for you to die on their ass. And when they don't, you're like, oh, well done. That's good. So it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I've spent many a day just lying in my bed sobbing after a death at a oh, competition. Yeah. They have destroyed confidence so no they're absolutely shocking wow. I'm just gonna leave my... i was just gonna say um uh, uh there's a there's like a quiz competition every month on my blog and i'd like you to write it from now on <laughs> <laughs> just with what you say <laughs> oh yeah if i'm in charge if i'm in charge I, I mean i would love to run a competition i'd love to judge people and destroy their yeah, dreams yeah. but i don't want to be me get your own i don't plan. want to be the yeah i don't want to be <laughs> Very much so, yeah. Um, do you suffer from any nerves before you go on stage and how do you cope with them? Um, I go to every single gig wishing that either the venue burns down or I'm hit by a bus wow. or something happens and literally isn't until the moment of that microphone that the nerves go. Wow. That, that but is everything up until I hold that wow. mic, I'm like, I had, and it's weird. I mean, my other half has said to me, it's so weird that you've chosen a career that you spend all your time dreading doing. And I was <laughs> like, but it's a little bit like, I used to be, I used to be a, um, a runner and I used to do a lot of long distance runs right, and you just right. dread it. You dread the gear up to the run. You dread the run. You're literally doing the run going, oh, another mile, another mile, another mile. But when you finished, it's this absolute euphoria that you can't be. Um, and it's very similar to comedy. The moment you take that mic, you're like, right, I'm in control. But everything wow. leading up until the moment you take that mic, you're like, oh, God, kill me now. That, Just... that is a fascinating answer because whenever I've seen you, and I've seen you many, many times, you've you've got that magic ingredient of confidence. You seem fearless <laughs> when, when you're actually chatting and talking. You will say whatever you like to make the audience laugh, which always works and makes you very very funny so it's it's very interesting right up to the point that you go live <laughs> i know yeah literally so now you know richard next time you see me and you see me walking up to that stage you know that i'm sitting there thinking i hate every single one of you i hate myself i hate this venue i hate the walls i want everything to just go away wow and then i take the mic and i and i enjoy it wow i know that, what that stupid is... career what what am i doing well, I just think I'd be nice just to go and work on a farm or something. Well, yeah, <laughs> there is that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, <laughs> do you have uh, a, a technique uh, for dealing with any difficult audience members? Do you get any difficult audience members? Do you sometimes wish that you could just do the do the 10 minutes and go or do you not enjoy it do you what do you get out of it when you go out there uh do i have any techniques to deal with difficult audience members i i've had people say things um 
I've had people say things which has been uncomfortable. Right. Um, I haven't had it for a little while, um, but it's been a kind of weird atmosphere. So it's not just me that has felt that, and it's been the other comedians. So you feel that kind of camaraderie. Right. Um, there has been a couple of times when there's been kind of like racist comments, things like that, which are awkward. Right. Even doing Zoom, um, people don't realise that their mics are on, for example. So things that they would say in passing that you wouldn't normally hear. Um, like I did a gig and this guy just went, oh, I'm not listening to this common trash. Common trash or common no. something. I'm getting it. But he obviously didn't realise his mic wow. was on. So he's just saying that. So he, oh. people probably say that when um, they're muttering to their partner next to them, but you don't hear it. So it's interesting, like being like, I mean, it was fine and I don't think he meant it. I mean, it wasn't fine because I was a bit like, yeah, <laughs> why, yeah. why am I calling you um, And why is that an insult? Yeah. Um, but, um, but it wasn't said to kind of have an argument with me. It's just the kind of doing doing Zoom. Right. I don't, apart from like those few experiences and the two experiences where I had some racist comments I put in my first show and then um, I kind of amalgamated it into one story. So I took two things that were said and made it one story to go to go into the show. But apart from those, I haven't really, I don't think a lot of people, I think when a woman walks onto the stage, she's already up against it because the majority of the audience is going, whether it's subconscious or subconscious, they're going, oh God, a woman. There That's is that so and women feel that. There's some brilliant it is, female but it's, comedians. There are, but yeah. you, you feel it. So you've already got to overcome that. But I think when you're quite a formidable woman, which I'm going to take ownership of. And yeah, I do come across as someone who's quite formidable. Yeah. Even if you're someone who's like, oh, I don't really like women, you're, you'd have to be quite brave to think that you're going to take me on because I come across so, you know, aggressive. Well, not aggressive. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not like really want to kind of town. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and I don't. Um, I don't think aggressive is the right word. But it's maybe not, just it's very not, but I know what you mean. Kind of you, you, out, confident, no brash. Yeah. So I think it would be. It would have to take somebody who's really gearing up for a fight. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um. I don't. I don't have many techniques. I guess you kind of just riff. As best you can, and I, in, I mean, there are times when someone's just said something, you just go because <laughs> I can't hear what they're saying. Yeah. it's in it's interesting because um, I've seen so many comedians and and being in the audience with so many heckles and all the rest of it. But um, the mo one of the most recent ones I remember was um, the comedian Ricky Grover, who um, played headline. Oh yeah, and, and uh, Ricky Grover's an ex boxer. And there was a really horrible bloke in the front yeah. row, uh, really being awful to him. And he jumped down and threw him out. And he and when he came back on, he came back on to the theme to Rocky, and everybody was going bananas. <laughs> and I thought it's such a good injury. Yeah, I mean, the audience seemed to be on your side. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's something that men do. I think men do have that, especially kind of geezers. I feel like there's a kind of macho off yeah. whereas in like blokes bloke blokey bloke types like ricky yeah i mean that guy is more like he that guy is more likely to sit with his arms crossed going oh fucking old woman <laughs> uh, to me but he's more likely to kick off with ricky yeah, so yeah. that's yeah that's something i face but i wouldn't i wouldn't take ricky on no no, no <laughs> i mean no, you gotta be no. brave you gotta be brave <laughs> <You're> very drunk <laughs> um, let's move on to the edinburgh fringe uh, I I spend my holidays in the summer going up to the Edinburgh Fringe and I go there for a week and I see about 50 shows and I have the time of my life when I go up there. Um, your... What did you do, Richard? Oh, it's just incredible. <laughs> <It's>... Hell! <laughs> um, your, your debut Edinburgh Fringe show was Crusade in 2019. What was your what was the debut fringe like for you? What did you think of it? Uh, it was the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. It was just a constant roller coaster. 
Wow. Um, for so many reasons. Well, firstly, it's your debut hour. So everyone's like, oh my God, debut, what's going to happen? Are you going to get trash? Will you ever work again? Oh my God. And secondly, it's like being stuck in an Instagram feed because wherever you go, there's just posters of people going, sold out, five stars, sold out, five stars. And you're like, ah, why am I not getting this? <laughs> um, and then you're leading up to your first ever review. So that's like you're shitting yourself. And then that comes out and you're like, phew, oh, that was good. All right. And then they're kind of like every other day and... And I was lucky. I didn't. I didn't get a bad review. So all of mine were, were you know, okay and above. Yeah. I mean, some were obviously a little harsher than others. But on the grand scheme of things, you know, all three, four stars, so fine. Yeah. And then, so you're kind of riding that roller coaster. And then there's the kind of booking seats, and and then you're kind of looking out for your flyers, and you're like, why? Why have I been handed four flyers? for some other pricks show. Where are the fly where are my flyers? Why aren't I you know, so you're getting really competitive. Um plus you're with comedians all the time who are all obsessing just as much as you are. Yeah. So that's and then I had you I miss my kids terribly. And then my kids come up and I want them to go away very much. So <laughs> I think they're wait. kind of, yeah, you can't wait. So it's just, it's really up and down. I would much rather do a festival where I can be in my house, be in my home life, go and perform and come back to my house. I find the kind of hanging out, drinking, you know, sharing with other people, all kind of having our own mini breakdowns. I just, it's, it's too much for me. I'm right. like, no, I can't do this. Plus, I hate going out. <laughs> did you? Did you? Uh, I don't like going out. <laughs> did you do all 25 nights? People are like, come to a party. <laughs> I did. Don't I know. And I literally, <laughs> I, no. I think I'm, I'm burst into tears like mid Edinburgh on stage <laughs> and just went, why is Edinburgh a thousand days long? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we could just condense all of this down to a week and we'd just be bam let's just get out of here and get it done oh. um <laughs> did, so did i'm you, i'm, I'm way all, too emotional with it all <laughs> did you do all 25 nights then did you yes, do the full run i did all 25 nights wow, yes wow. and i moaned as if i'd been sent to war <laughs> So my agent was like, can you get the fuck over yourself? It's an art festival. <laughs> I mean, there are people in Syria who don't understand my stuff very well. I'm waiting for a review. Um, so I find on, but that being said, that hour that I was on the stage, I mean, I had one, I think one show, which I walked away going, oh, I hated that. There was like six people in, one was a reviewer. <laughs> Wow. I didn't realise he was a reviewer. Wow. So I was like, look, this is really becoming quite stressful um, trying to do, you're all like spaced out. You're not even in groups. So it's just like six spaced yeah, out yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I ended up just kind of riffing with him quite a lot. Wow. He obviously was just, I didn't realise that he was like, hmm. Um, so that was probably my main scam. I mean, he still gave me three stars, so I, I yeah. can't be too cross with him. But I was just like, why did I have to insult the guy who was reviewing me? That wasn't a great <laughs> move. Um, but that was probably, but apart from that show, I, I, I just, that hour on stage, I loved it. There you I go. I loved you it. See, but it's, once, it's the kind of like, yeah. Once you're on stage, you're living your life. Yeah, mm. I do. I, once I'm on stage, I really enjoy it. And I had some belters up there. There were some really great audiences. They were really, really good. It was really good fun. That's brilliant. Yeah. And I got, I mean, Rich Wilson was doing his show at the same time, so he was downstairs. Oh, so we would end up, we would end up in the, and, you know, Jade would come over, obviously, yeah. and we'd end up in the, in the bar having a drink afterwards, and Jojo Sutherland. Brilliant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan Dalton. So there was just these people that are just, they were just really lovely, great people to kind of have a bit of a come down beer with yeah. after every show. So, I mean, that was lovely. That was nice. It must be terrifying again though thinking about going on to the stage because the story that comes to mind um i went to see a comic who um uh, i can't even remember the name of him but but he he uh, he played to three people there was me and my friend and there was a drunken scotsman in the front seat and he walked out the comedian and he said, hello, ladies and gentlemen. And he said, oh, there's only three of you here. Thank you so much for coming along. Let me buy you a drink. I'm not going to bother with the show tonight. 
and the mm. and the Scotsman in the front row went, "No, I want I want the hour. I've paid my six pound." And he had to perform just a thing. It was oh, like, that's mean. Oh. <laughs> that's mean. That's mean, isn't it? I mean, I kind of get it because I'm like, even if there's, I mean, like, I mean, I've just described performing to six people, but like, even if there was six people, I, I didn't once think, oh, I'm going to not do this. Yeah, yeah, because yeah people have paid this yeah. is their night out so you've got a, i do think when there's less people you you do become a lot more conversational with the audience and you have to riff with it because it's essentially like you're hold, holding court for yeah, a bit for exactly. an hour yeah, of, yeah, of, yeah. of banter whereas in if there's a full room you can just go to town on your hour and and the you know i had a um, um i went to a show one year it was justin moore house who i love and he's a he's, he's a very funny uh deliverer of a gag and i laughed a lot at him and he said and he said if you if you've got a spare moment uh spare hour after the show go next door because my friend's doing his first ever gig and it was an audience of six watching john bishop so there i was and it was like a year later he's playing arenas it was it was unbelievable his meteoric rise a classic example yeah know? and yeah. and you think well there you go wow. you've seen it of a gig <laughs> yeah um can you describe your writing process for a show and where your ideas come from <laughs> So I've only written two shows. I've obviously Crusade is I think for a lot of comics doing their first show, you just take all the material you've ever written for those year or two year and just rag it into your hour um, and create a narrative out of it. And I think that's quite straightforward to do because all of your writing is quite similar anyway. So you've clearly got a theme that yeah. you talk about. And then it was on the way back from Edinburgh, I came up with the idea for my new show, Hashtag Not All Men. It was literally on the train. I was on the train. I started off at Waverley Station going, I will never do Edinburgh again. That was the most stressful month of my life. And then on the way back, I sat and looked through all the all the kind of positives, like, you know, comments that people had, you know, posted and, yeah. and things that people had said and reviews. And then I suddenly came up with the idea for my next show, which is kind of like a sequel to right. crusade and that's the fact that in crusade i talk a lot about identity and i talk about um how you know you can't you, it's a struggle to fit in with different elements of your perceived identity like you might have you know questions for example um some of the far-right comments that you know go along with saying i'm proud of being british and you also you want to question some of the like sexist things that go along saying yeah, I'm very proud to have a Middle Eastern Muslim background. But what was really interesting is I came away from that and I realised that there is, um, when we're talking about Britain, even when I gig in the Middle East, everybody understands nuances. Right. And when you talk about the Middle East, people don't understand nuances. So right. whatever you want to discuss is taken like this blanket term. And that's when I wanted to look at the idea that sexism isn't something which is you're you're not born into it because of your culture. It's something that we learn. And so it was drawing a comparison of how I was brought up, and then also looking at the '90s and growing up in the '90s and, that's and fascinating. You know, lad culture. Yeah. So it became like a sequel to that's brilliant. to Crusade. So so and was that going to be your 2020 Edinburgh show, and will it be your it next was. one? It was. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know what's going on with Edinburgh. I did it at Leicester Comedy Festival. Yeah. And got nominated for this of course um, <laughs> I saw got that nominated I was for really show, which was a lovely yeah I was like what a nice surprise I was like this is the way to do a festival yeah, it's yeah, online yeah, yeah. so I'm in my house I didn't even know that there were such a thing well they did, I didn't know that I was they gonna did. be you know that yeah they did they did very well with it online they've had very good viewing figures mm. online yeah so uh, yeah amazing yeah it's gonna be yeah absolutely amazing well done you um uh, <laughs> thank you for my uh, shameless little brag <laughs> how do you remember all your stories and routines do you, do you have a way of remembering them all do you have markers in your head do you write them down do you make notes yeah yeah you have like markers you have little there are things like the other day i was trying to remember a story i mean a, a routine that i used to do it's a little bit like 
you remember when you were doing your GCSEs yeah. and you knew all the things that you had to memorise and then the moment your last day of exams you wake up the next day and you've got I have no idea what Pythagoras is I have no <laughs> idea you just it literally like you put a gun to my head I don't know when Mormonism was set up in, in the United States I've forgotten everything I've forgotten everything that I was supposed to do for my GCSEs <laughs> even though I knew it off by heart and I'd learn it by rote and it's like that now because obviously we've been in lockdown a lot of my material now is based on lockdown right but I was trying to remember a pre-lockdown routine and I could not remember the punchline wow for the life of me so I have hundreds of books little notepads this yeah. is my little desk of um it's my little working desk. Oh, yeah, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. And Great. I've got all, yeah, so I've got all my little notepads here. Brilliant. And that's all my, yeah, so that's all my material. Wow. So I have to sit and scour through all my notes. May I say <laughs> that looks really, really organised. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, you say that, but um, there's also, I mean, that's brilliant. you say that, but I've also got a lot of, um, Barbies and dinosaurs. All oh, right. Well, there you go. All, yeah. all around the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they're organised as well. <laughs> <laughs> the reason the, the reason why I asked the question is that apart from the blog, the most creative thing I ever did was um, write a play and appear in a play, appear in my play uh, for comic relief. I, me and my mate uh, appeared on stage. For comment relief the, the 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 play was called the applicant i wrote it for the edinburgh fringe and it was about a success uh, uh, it was about a bloke who comes down from carlisle who is me because i'm from carlisle who who comes down to london and he's got a very successful girlfriend and he can't get a job so every scene is him uh, uh, either in a waiting room waiting to be interviewed and then interviewed so when he's in the waiting room, he's very nervous and he looks round and he sees the audience and he starts chatting to them. So I wrote all these great monologues about his life and everything. And of course, we did three shows and the first time I ran out, I, I had to do this six page monologue and I was like a rabbit in headlights and forgot the lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all get like and that. Spent so it's long. really hard. Oh, it was a nightmare. Oh, I got I, I, I got one of my best jokes in it, which was his name. It was called Norman Oliver Hope, so it was No Hope, which I thought was genius. But um, <laughs> as soon as my <laughs> mate came on, it was brilliant because we could just banter. He played all the different interviewers, you see. But uh, oh, I never made the same mistake again. And we had we'd had ten <laughs> weeks rehearsal of it, so I think you have um, to have a structured routine to remember it all, and you know, which is yeah, you got to, yeah the order, yeah, yeah, and also it's never word for word the same, you know, yeah, so <laughs> it's not quite the same as a play where you got to memorise it yeah, word yeah, for word the yeah. same. Um, you've supported on tour uh, big names: Jason Manford, Alan Davis, Shapiko Shandy, Sindhu V. And Joe Brand, tell me more about. Well, I've this. opened. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't supported them on tour, but I've supported. Well, Sindhu, I supported on her tour. Yeah. But um, Jason Manford and Shappy Cool Sandy, I was the opening act. They did um, the Isle of Wight Festival and Chiswick Proms Festival. So Isle of Wight Proms and Chiswick Proms. Right. So I was the opening act for Alan Davies and. Um, Jason Manford and Shappy then wow. and then Joe Brand I opened for Joe Brand when we did a uh, gig for oh, it was just like a private gig thing so if you're Joe playing Brand. somewhere like the Isle of Wight Festival that's thousands I don't know how many it's just like a huge field well you're not daunted it's cool, by the numbers um clearly no <laughs> I'm no, that, these people no weirdly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, when you're opening for for someone as big as Alan Davis or um, Jason Manford, yeah. people are just like, oh, she's on for 20 minutes, so I'll just go to the bar. So, <laughs> no, well, so I've you've been just be... really <laughs> analysing your act, and she's brilliant. Esther's great. <laughs> um, I saw Alan Davis, God, it must have been 30 years ago. Uh, and um, he he is just he's so good with an audience. He 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 can spot yeah. any 
anything in an audience and he's he's on it and he's he's it, it, it's just fascinating I've, I've 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 seen all of them that, you, that you've said um who, he's very he's very yeah he's very good very calm he's, yeah yeah, yeah. very easy going and it makes you listen mm -hmm. to him um who are your favorite comedians past and present so Victoria Wood, because I grew up with Victoria Wood. Excellent. And actually, when I look back on my first ever gigs, I'm literally doing a Victoria Wood impersonation. So clearly, that's just what I wanted to be. But um, Victoria Wood, yeah, definitely grew up with her. And um, and then comedians that I started to really love uh, was Dara Brian, yeah. Jeannie Shear. They were very much my favourite. Michael McIntyre. Um, they Rod uh, Rod Gilbert. Um, really good. Yeah. They Victoria Wood. Victoria Wood, I saw in Carlisle on tour. And, I did too. and the fascinating thing about her was that when she walked out, she had about five really great gags about Carlisle. So only that audience could know about those jokes. Yeah. And that was oh, a, no, that's that a, that's was a brilliant, brilliant technique. Line. She's yeah. such a loss. She was so it good. Get, oh, I know. She was really talented. Yeah, yeah. Really talented. Yeah. Um, like me, before you were a comedian, did you go to a lot of comedy gigs as a member of the audience? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've, I've, I was just thinking then. No, I didn't. <laughs> I've, I've asked many a comedian this, and the answer is no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> never i think it's something that if you're a, if you're a fan i think there are certain things that if you're a fan doesn't mean that you want to do yeah. or can do so there are things that i would go and watch yeah ballet opera boxing there are things that i really enjoy watching but never in my mind would i go oh yeah i'm gonna go and do that no, yeah um so maybe that's the difference between being somebody who enjoys watching it and somebody who enjoys doing it yeah that being said that's mental. I've never thought about that, but no. <laughs> I used to I used to listen to a lot of stand ups. All those stand ups I've just said, right. I would have their like, you know, the C D and listen to it in the car on long journeys. I, yeah, I'd listen yeah. to their stand up all the time. Yeah. But no, I wouldn't go out and watch comedy no. live. The reason the reason why I ask about the member of the audience and the favourite comedians, there's a there's a section in my blog called The Ones That Got Away. And I've and I've listed twenty five comedians who have either passed on or I haven't had a chance to see, and uh, talked about them because I would have loved to have seen them. So the so top of the tree for me is Morecambe and Wise. I would have loved to have seen them. That's that that's the reason why I do comedy. I I I did see Les Dawson and I saw Tommy Cooper and the two Ronnies and Ken Dodd and on and on and on. Um, but uh, Markham and Wise I would have loved but Dave Allen's in there Bob Monkhouse is in there and the reason why I'm writing about them is they've got a lot of memories for me as I'm growing up and I think that's what comedy does you know that's why I go to a lot of it I mean even I can't go seven nights I'm all comedied out but uh, I go as often <laughs> <don't> as I can <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> um, as, a, as, as an extension of the question if you're on a comedy if you're on a comedy bill do you stay and watch all the other comedians? Um, no, because <laughs> I tend. <laughs> <laughs> I would no, I would. Yeah. I mean, I, I if it's somewhere where there's kind of like a bit of a vibe and you're all enjoying the night, then yeah, of course, yes, like, of I course. love doing yeah, that. Yeah. But normally, I just run in, do my set, and then I scuttle back because I've got kids and of course it's just yeah. it's knackering yeah yeah, so yeah. I, and like i said i'm terribly like not very social <laughs> and um but do i like to yeah there are people that i really do enjoy watching yeah i mean there's always people i enjoy watching yeah, and i enjoy course. being on a bill with them because it means i i get a chance to see them that's great but i don't i don't um make a point of staying to watch people no no, no. um <laughs> which makes me sound terrible yeah. no 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 that, that is fair enough <laughs> Um, the last 18 months has been really weird with lockdown and everything. Has uh, it? <laughs> it has, amazingly. Uh, how have you found online gigs as opposed to live gigs? And what do you think the future is for comedy? 
I have no idea on the future of comedy. Right. So that I don't know. Um, online gigs. <laughs> I love your no, directness. It's not <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Um, I, I've got no idea. Like, literally, I don't know. Because I think there'll be another lockdown. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm very negative, by the way, Richard. I'm a joy. I'm that's an another, absolute that's fucking another joy. That's positive that you give, give off as a comedian. Yeah. I'm just really positive. Let's look um, forward to lockdown four, right? <laughs> yes. You heard it here first, people. I, I called lockdown three and everyone was like, no, there won't be. And I was like, there will be. And there was. So it's really hard to know everything, but I do. Um... <laughs> I, I so I don't know but I think maybe the future of comedy there'll be a lot more pop-up venues I think we're going to see a lot more people just open random venues and I think that'll be quite cool in a way um but I think yeah so I, I don't know about the future of like the the bigger clubs I know that they're planning to reopen right. and I very much hope they do because yeah. they're a joy to performing um I can't remember the other part of the question oh how online how gigs have you found online gigs? I well I think well, it's a totally different skill set. So it was something that had to be learnt again. But yeah. I've actually really enjoyed it and I quite like it. You've done quite which a lot of them, have you? Have you? I've done thousands. Oh, have you? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's no, great. I haven't done, I haven't done 8,000. I don't know how many I've done, but I've been gigging pretty much every, I would say at least five times a week. Wow. Wow. The whole lockdown. Well, so that... I have been gigging a lot right. and it has made me a lot more confident online i am now terrified about going on a stage again though wow so that's that's interesting isn't it? because you know when you now just i just back. yeah i just want to i don't want to go and see people's real faces i'd rather just hear them <laughs> slag me off over a, <laughs> <laughs> over a muted mic on <laughs> you you make me laugh so much it's wonderful um uh so um i've seen you do many a gig at always be comedy online and you're very, very good there. I've never done Always Be Comedy. You've done Always Be, com <laughs> you've done always be Comedy twice. I've done one. No, I've Have never done, done it. I've, I've done it once. You've definitely... No. No, I've seen you. I've seen... Have you done it live, Always Be Comedy? I've done it live. That's where I'm thinking of. I've, I've not it done one, it online. Once live and once online. That's where I was... Yeah. I don't think I've done it online, you, have I? Yes, I remember I because I... Yeah, definitely, because I was laughing loudly at you and you commented... <laughs> <laughs> which I get all the time um, the reason <laughs> the reason why I'm bringing it up is that I go to a lot of online gigs my main one is always be comedy but I always go I also go to return of the crack the Irish one on a Friday night and I go to oh, right. um, Charlotte Regan and I go to um, Sean James happy Monday's one and um, when the online gigs first started there was no audio so I was sitting here laughing at four walls in silence. And I thought I was going to get taken away. And then they opened it up. <laughs> and, and, and it I know, great. it was weird yeah. to begin with. It was like you were just talking to the abyss. Yeah. <laughs> it was really weird. Really, oh, it was, really uh, weird. I think, I think the advantage... But then now it's weirder when... Don't get it. I th I, well, it's quite weird when they tell you to turn the mics off and people are just smiling. <laughs> I bet you can't hear anything. It is, it's a very bizarre yeah. relationship to have. It is. But, I mean, I've done so many now that I'm like, I think it's kind of managing how it is and, and interactions and stuff. And, I mean, you know, you can ask Sean, sometimes I don't even do material. I just literally <laughs> talk to people for the entire time because I find that a lot easier on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because you can just yeah. talk to people about what's going on in the house and of stuff, course, which you can't yeah. normally. And, and, I, and I think the other advantage is that um, it, it's very good for people who can't get to a comedy club because it can go worldwide. But for me, you can't be live. I, I really miss going out on a Saturday night, having a few beers and then going to a live gig because you anything can happen within that room. That's that's the beauty of life. The online gigs are a super substitute. That, and, and, and if I hadn't been there, I wouldn't have got through lockdown. They've helped me enormously. But live gigs are, please come back. Please come back. Oh, is it? Yeah, you can't, you can't replace. <laughs> Because it's a night, like you say, it's a night out. Yeah, yeah. It's a night out for people. Yeah. So it's kind of like sitting and watching something online that you would normally enjoy. You know, it's the difference between, I mean, you can sit and watch a film, can't you, on Netflix, but the experience of going to the cinema. 
is is a night out and yeah, it's something yeah. i mean that's my the cinema is my that's my thing yeah. i absolutely I love, love film going as well yeah yeah so it's my you know going going and watching a good film and that's like if we're going to do something if me and my other half are going to do something that's what we're going to do book somewhere where we can have a bottle of wine watch a film yeah. we've got loads of amazing like independent cinemas that are absolutely awesome that is the thing i love to do and it's all very well saying, well, you can have a bottle of wine and watch a film at home. It's like, I don't want to be in my fucking house. I want to go out. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get out. <laughs> it is. It's, it's weird. It's like, oh, okay. Well, you know, why is, why is prison punishment then if it's so great? Um, so, no, I do, I do. I completely understand it. And it is that thing of like having a beer and, and yeah, the vibe yeah, as well. Yeah. Sometimes, like, like you will do you will do gigs where, you know, obviously everyone's sat in their little boxes and in their own houses and people will be chuckling away and it's lovely. But also, there's that thing of when, when the audience have got a really good vibe with each other, when they're really feeling the energy of each other, every single comic is going to have a good time. Everyone in that room is going to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, because there's something, you know, it's infectious. You yeah. laugh when, you know, when the people you're sat with are laughing, it rubs off on you, you're all kind of enjoying yourself. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a much it is, different it, feel. It is. Um, just before we go, is there anything else you would like to say? Uh, is there any online gigs? I'm thinking Drawn Together and Clueless Does the 90s. Any <laughs> podcasts and things? Uh, yeah, so me and Lily do me and Lily do a game show on a Monday night yeah. at eight o'clock with different comedians. Um, and then I've got my podcast, which is No Nation, yeah, which you can find on pretty much most platforms. Where I chat to different, not comedians, but different comedians and other people like TV broadcasters and and presenters and um, uh, celeb types about being dual heritage. Um, I think that's it for plugging. And you, well, um, you've written a book as well, haven't you? I part authored, yeah. Yeah. I could just get one and say, yeah, I wrote it. <laughs> yeah, so I contributed to it. <laughs> I contributed to it. And so it's a, it's a satirical collection. It was in reaction to Trump's um, travel ban. Brilliant. So it was trying to show all the different facets of, of what it is to come from uh a middle eastern background so it's, it, it was it was, i mean it's a great book because it's you know you've got poetry you've got written autobiographical pieces like i contributed but then you've also got photography you've got drag artists who have been photographed so it kind of shows the middle east as this really dynamic background rather than just brandishing it as one 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 thing brilliant um so yeah you can get that on amazon that's brilliant <laughs> um and finally where can find where, where can folk find you on social media they can find me on Instagram and Twitter. They cannot find me on TikTok. No, I don't blame you. It's the same with me. I, d I don't. I, is, I think TikTok I is what a clock does. <laughs> I had a meeting with TikTok, and they're like, "So you're gonna?" A lady from TikTok was like, "You'd be really great at putting videos up." And I was just like, "I I don't know if people want to see just a miserable fucker ranting. Um, is that what people want? <laughs> it's I, it's got to be for more kind of positive." <laughs> influences rather than just me going oh fucking hell what a load of shite this all is um maybe if there's a kind of negative negative element to tiktok i'll take to it but yeah well well yet. please keep doing what you do <laughs> thank because you thank you so much so for much. having me richard <laughs> i have so much enjoyed talking well it's always to lovely you. to see you i've got to say i think you're a good luck you're a good luck charm whenever well, i see you i always have a good time so <laughs> well you're very kind and th thank you so much for your time i've much enjoyed it and all the best to you yeah take care richard see all, you later all the best <laughs>